Here's one for you from Bill Dudley, the headline of his latest piece, The Federal Reserve Owes the World a Mere Culpa. Bill Dudley, Bloomberg Opinion columnist and former New York Fed president, a good friend of this programme as well, joins us right now. Bill, let's start there. A Mere Culpa, what do you want that to look like? I think the Fed needs to explain to the world what went wrong. Why, why are we having to raise rates off 400 basis points this year, four percentage points this year? That's a huge amount of tightening in a short period of time and is evidence that the Fed was very late. Um, the Fed made a couple of mistakes. Number one, how they implemented their 2% average inflation regime. They basically tied their hands and said, we can't raise rates until a whole bunch of things happen. Uh, number two, they made some important forecasting errors, both on inflation and on the tightness of the labor market. I think, you know, doing a mea culpa, I think is important to, to, to basically build the Fed's credibility uh, for the future. If you don't admit error, how can you be confident that the, that the central bank will make, won't make a whole other mistake next time? Bill, do you think they can do both that and do something which you asked them to do a number of weeks ago, which is to be much more open about the pain that this country, this economy is about to go through? And I wonder if they do both. You say it enhances credibility. Do you think it also invites questions about whether it should retain its independence? Well, I think you want the central bank to retain its independence because you don't want monetary policy to be politicized. If monetary policy becomes politicized, you're going to have even worse monetary policy than we've gotten over the last couple of years. Bill, on the flip side, there is an increasing chorus of big names saying that the Fed is moving to make a policy error on the other side by raising too far that a deep recession is not an inevitability, but will be the consequence of them raising rates as much as they're expected to raise rates. Are you sympathetic to that view? Well, I think that's a logical outcome of being very slow to tighten in the first place. Uh, if you've been slow to tighten, then you have to do a lot to catch up. If you do a lot to catch up, you may not notice that you've done more than uh, that's actually sufficient. I think uh, you know hard landing is very likely because the labor market has gotten too tight. The Fed needs to push the unemployment rate up significantly, and that's likely to lead to a recession. Uh, I think it's almost inevitable at this point. What's the economic benefit to the Fed coming out and being honest and saying what John was pointing out is a very difficult message to swallow, which is we made mistakes. Oh, and by the way, we're going to necessarily make a mistake on the other side, tighten into a hard landing. Uh, what does that give them in terms of credibility that can actually help ameliorate the cycle? Well, I think that they are not going to say that we're going to tighten on purpose to generate a recession. I don't think you'd ever expect a central bank to, to say that. But I do think you know Powell has now endorsed the notion that there is going to be some pain involved. I think what the Fed has not done, though, is admitted, how do we get into this mess in the first place? And I think that's the part of the, uh, the message that the Fed needs to, to send to markets to build their credibility for the future. And Bill, credit to you. I remember doing a panel with you and Mohamed Alarian back in June, maybe May of 2021. And you were both making this point that the Fed needs to appreciate some two-way risk here, perhaps start by pulling back on QE. That would have meant maybe going six months earlier than they actually did, Bill. What difference would six months have made, do you think? I think the advantage of going earlier is you wouldn't have to go as fast. and You'd have more ability to assess the effects of your actions. Right now, they have to get to tight very quickly. And given the long legs of monetary policy, this increases the risk that they overdo it. If you spread out the monetary policy tightening over a longer period of time, you have more time to assess the impact of your actions. You've talked, Bill, about how you could see a peak Fed funds rate north of 5%. The market is coming to your view. You are out front that way. Right now in the market, we have a nearly 4.7% terminal rate for next year. Where have you changed your view on where you think the Fed has to go in order to bring in inflation and honestly address some of the flaws of the previous thinking? I don't think it's so much that the peak in rates has to be higher. I think the fact is the Fed has to hold that peak for, for a longer period of time. I think the Fed's strategy here is not to just keep hiking regardless of what's what's happening in terms of the real economy. But I think they want to go to a restrictive policy and then they want to hold it there until they see clear signs that that's actually bringing inflation down and generating more slack in the U.S. labor market.